John how a mature city can have a really mature debate. Not one that's driven out of the front pages of a paper or out of talkback radio or out of parliament, but actually amongst ourselves. And so even this discussion here today, it's not perfect, but it's a lot different from some of the discussions we've had here on this subject over the last six years. And this is a way for us to go forward, so let's just keep moving it forward. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brewer. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. <coughs> I'll be calling a division on, on G, uh, because I believe that sends the council, the chief executive, uh, on an unrequired uh, job in the next 90 days, starting in the next 90 days, uh, to firm up an option, and those options that have been written into the agenda are Manukau and the Firth of Thames. I believe, Madam Chair, that both those options are dogs, and this report spends most of it outlining just why they are dogs, why, why they uh, are fraught with engineering challenges, with environmental challenges, with cultural challenges, with social cha challenges, with transport challenges, with fiscal challenges, yet we are now embarking, uh, instructing, although apparently this is not work, uh, and apparently this will not uh, require any resource or any cost, but nonetheless, we are, we are embarking on a process today uh, to firm up one of these options. And I hear what Councillor Darby is saying about the flotilla uh, <coughs> of a thousand people, or how many there were. Well, this, they were there largely not promoting the Firth of Thames or Manukau, and I've yet to see those flotillas. Maybe we, there's one at the Firth of Thames promoting it today, Councillor Fletcher, and one in Manukau. They were there about reclamation, and the first recommendation that most of us sign up to today is that there will be no further recommendation. That is what most of us agree to, and that is one of the top uh, future port study findings uh, and what, what the CWG uh, uh, has confirmed. Uh, what, what the working group has also confirmed, Madam Chair, uh, is that neither options that they've been forced to, to look at uh, long term are satisfactory. And perhaps, ideally, what we now need to do is find a better option. Well, that, this work here doesn't give us the opportunity to go and find a better option. No, we're burying ourselves out the back of Manukau and in the Firth of Thames. And this would be like, uh, Mr Mayor, the Wellington City Council today deciding that perhaps Parliament should either be in Porirua or Upper Hutt and sending the Chief Executive <coughs> on that mission uh, to, to to firm up the process and scope it and do a short list on that. Well, guess what? The new Wellington City Council and Mayor uh, in October might not want their parliament or whatever in Porirua or Upper Hutt. And that is exactly what we face here. I cannot see any ground support uh, for, a, for a move. I can see lots of ground support, and I think it's been addressed by this chamber on reclamation. I think it's very clear, and I think the reports have articulated the views on reclamation and reflected what the majority of the community want, tick. But no one in that flotilla was promoting the Firth of Thames or the Manukau Harbour from memory. And I would like to see now a democratic process of 90 days. This is a 50-year project report, Ma Madam Chair, and that is uh, what Rick has articulated to us today. It's not 30 or 40 years, it's a 50-year view. So if it's a 50-year view, and if the report says that we've got enough capacity short to medium term <clears throat> and that there should never be reclamation beyond what's ever consented, then why spend the next 90 days on the eve of a local body election and a change of mayoralty uh, trying, uh, trying to narrow our options down to the Manukau <coughs> Harbour and Firth of Thames when Mr Dr Bovin has said that a, a better option, trying to find a better option, would be a more satisfactory outcome. Uh, I would like to this debate to be, I know that it's been leaked to the media, but I would like this report to be absorbed by the public, to be debated in the community and town halls over the next three months, uh, and just see, order, how, Madam Chair, see how much... It's a misrepresentation of Dr Bovin. Point of order. I want some clarification. Did Dr Bovin say the words as conveyed by Councillor Brewer just then? I, it wasn't a direct quote, it was my interpretation. It's a debate. 
No, this, there's an awful lot not of... A point of order. Order. Anyway, not a that's not a point of order. No, a misrepresentation of what's said by staff or members is a point of order. <coughs> I've written down a direct quote where it says, neither option is very satisfactory. Ideally, you'd try to find a better option. So I'd ask Councillor Darby to rewind the tapes and listen to what was said by our presenters. And Councillor Darby also argues uh, that let's not stop governance. Well, last week he was in the CCO committee Councillor, saying Councillor, that we shouldn't, okay, that not, we shouldn't appoint new um, CCO directors and give the mandate to but the incoming is, council. Right. Yeah, good. Wow. So he was wanting to stop yeah, right. governing on that. And we, it would be really good if we could actually. Oh, just thank you, Madam Chair, and I, I appreciate that you're not interrupting me this just this once. But I would like to um, put up the division and call for a division on G uh, one, two, and three because it's wholly inappropriate that this council. Uh, makes these decisions around Manukau and the Firth of Thames when there is no public support for either, uh, when we've been advised that ideally a better outcome should be found, when we've got a 50-year time frame, when the decision doesn't have to be made, when the issue of reclamation has already been decided and sorted and recommended. Uh, I believe we need to take a deep breath on this. I believe that this should be a part of the political debate over the next three months. And if the new incoming mayor comes in with a huge mandate to build a port uh, in the Firth of Thames, then let's start the work. Uh, until then, uh, let's, let's hold, it's not a case of doing nothing, it's just holding the report, giving it to the public to absorb, asking for feedback, and then for a new council and mayor on a completely fresh mandate to action the work, to action the work on Manukau and the Firth of Thames uh, at this point of time uh, is totally inappropriate and a waste of council resource and focus when there are such bigger issues that the public want us, uh, want us to appear on. And frankly, uh, the issues in Auckland these days are around uh, cost, uh, around the uh, transport, around housing, uh, around the finances of the Auckland Council, uh, and maybe, maybe, if, if, if there is so much love for the Firth of Thames uh, and the Manukau Harbour option, maybe a new mayoral candidate will come out and win off the back of that. But at this point, it is a non-issue and it should be put to bed uh, for another 90 days. So we'll, at this stage, we've had the correct amount of speakers according to standing orders. I can offer Councillor Darby a right of reply, but I'll just, before we, we do that, and a very brief one, no, you don't, I'm just going to ask um, for Dean just to clarify something that has been consistently repeated around the room that isn't quite correct. Whether you choose to go with option one or two is entirely a political choice. There's no implication in either option one or two that a decision has been made. Um, so that's certainly something we all need to be clear on. If you elect to go for option two, what you're essentially agreeing the staff to go away and do is to identify third parties, independent third parties, one of whom would come back <coughs> Uh, one of whom the new council would ultimately select to do that piece of work uh, identified in G3. You're also asking staff to scope up how you might approach identifying relocation triggers, but not doing the work associated with identifying the relocation triggers. And you're also asking staff to develop a process for investigating location options. So it's, it's setting up the work that might occur subject to the next council approving that work and the funding to go with it. Madam Chair, point of clarification. Yep. But there's no budgeting for this, allocated budgeting for this. The, 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 so there's been two concerns raised. First of all, the, the work that, that is proposed in G1, 2 and 3 is the work that we would normally do as part of our business as usual funding, because it's about identifying the scope of what might need to occur by others. Okay. Actually implementing it is a separate issue. Once the scope's determined, oh, sorry, a budget can be agreed and then would need to be approved by a future council. Okay. I'm going to, we're now at the stage, well we've had 
speakers for, speakers against, is it absolutely critical? Well, I, just, I, just, I just want to know from, from Mr. Kimpton. It's very hard to hear with everyone else joining yeah, in. Yeah, I just want to know yeah. from Mr. Kimpton if the new mayor decided that this would be a project that could be run in house within the council, could we do it in house without having to go out to get independent um, um, third parties? A absolutely, because you would, rec you, you would, there'll only be a recommending report, and you can choose as the future council what you what you wish to do with that recommending report. Yeah, okay. that's why it's only uh, it's only at that level. It's not doing the work. But it's so I think that is, that's clear. I think we've got all the clarity we can. <coughs> Councillor Lee, question, M quickly. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm just concerned that w with, w with the, this ongoing, with the intention to have an ongoing study or have the Chief Executive identify uh, options in the Manukau Harbour and the Firth of Thames in the next 90 days, <laughs> that the real, the real work that needs to be done um, in regard to relocating or finding or identifying alternative sites for the bulk liquid, the um, uh, farm, the tank farm, um, there's no mention of that at all. And I, I'm getting the impression that the council sort of into displacement behaviour. We have a, a, a difficult political situation, so we have another study, and we're actually missing the point. There is a need to do some work on relocating the bulk liquid plant, the, bulk, the tank farm. Uh, nothing has, this, this study didn't do anything about that apparently, but it is a pressing concern. It needs to be done by the council with all the planners we have um, in-house, and it needs to be done with some urgency mm -hmm. to enable better development of the Winyard Quarter. But there's, instead, we're going into some displacement behaviour about the Firth of Thames, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> no, Councillors, we are, I think, straying a little but it's my understanding that this is within the scope of the of the work proposed according to Mr. Kempton. We'll take an answer from Mr. Victor and then we'll put we vote? the vote and we're going to do G by division. So the way that I understand G three <laughs> I didn't propose G three, but the way that I understand it is what Councillor Lee is talking about. That is what that scope is about. If you want to mm -hmm. deal with that shorter term issue, how would you go about it? Exactly. And then put that to the incoming council and they can decide what they want to do or not. There's a point in meetings where the questions keep going and they add to the confusion. I, my understanding is that we've probably gone as far as we can go. It's actually very, very clear. Mr. Kempton has clarified the issues. We're now put the recommendations and we'll put G as requested by division. Right. So I will move, or oh, you've moved and up, seconded. We've got A, we've got, thank you councillor, I'm quite capable of <laughs> working <laughs> that out. I know that F comes before G, I've got that that far. So we're doing A to F, I'll put that, all those in favour please say aye. 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 And then, count, and then G, we're going to put by division. <laughs> Your Worship? Aye. <laughs> Councillor Anai? Aye. Councillor Brewer? No. Councillor Casey? No. Councillor Cashmore? Yes. Just bring it down so people can. But we, people should have it in front of them. Councillor Darby? Four. Councillor Filipina? Aye. Councillor Fletcher? No. Councillor Crum? Four. Councillor Lee? No. Member Namani? Aye. Councillor Penrose? No. Councillor Quacks? No. Councillor Stewart? No. Member Taipari? Aye. Councillor John Walker? Four. Councillor Wayne Walker? No. John Walker was a yes. Councillor Watson? No. 
That's the Wayne Walker. You've already no, asked. Vote yeah. again, Wayne. Vote no. again. You have no, no idea. You have no idea. Come on, no. you never get that opportunity again, <laughs> Wayne. <laughs> We're watching. No. Deputy Mayor Hulse. Aye. Kimmy, did you see yours? I did. Just have a look at it. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I it still was a no. I was a no. I don't know why it's so hard today. I voted no. Is it's that right? lost by <laughs> 10 votes, votes to zero. So that. I wouldn't go that far. I Cameron. think that we don't need to go Good. back. That still sits comfortably within the, the process. That's just an extra addition that's been lost. But we know where we're going from here. So I'm going to call a an adjournment of. 25 through till 2 and there's a briefing downstairs on the infrastructure on the infrastructure fund issue so oh and we'll do this now because we're coming back and we will be in confidence so let's move this now um, I, I will move it I'll Councillor Wood will second. I'll put that. All those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against? Carried. That's lovely. Thank you, everyone.